Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're back with my monthly sponsored video from Plex and this month we're taking a look at their new home theater client that runs on Mac and Windows. You might recall they discontinued the home theater client a little while back, but now it is back in a new form and we're going to take a look at how to configure it and some things to think about uh, with this client in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and they have not reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this new client is all about. Now, right now, this is in beta, and it lives currently in a forum post on the Plex website, which I'll link to in the video description. This is an official client, so over time, it's going to get improved quite a bit. So you'll probably want to bookmark this link and check back frequently so you can get all the latest features as they're implemented. And of course, the team is always looking for feedback as well, so you can leave that uh, right in the forum. Now you can see what it currently supports while I'm shooting the video here, and no doubt we'll see a lot more added to it over time. And this is very different than the desktop client they released not all that long ago, which kind of replicates what you might experience on a web browser or on a tablet or phone. Uh, this new client is going to give you something that you're very familiar with on an NVIDIA Shield or some other kind of set-top box, that lean back kind of interface. Now, one thing to note here is that you do have to configure it a little bit to get it to go full screen, and there's also some settings for audio, and we're going to step through those in a minute. Uh, the big consideration, though, is that HDR on Windows is really flaky when it comes to home theater right now. So, for example, this little computer here, which in full disclosure came in free of charge from Azul a little while back for review, uh, has one of those Gemini Lake processors on board, one of those low-powered Intel chips. It plays 4K video just fine, but it doesn't support HDR at all. And if you have a Windows computer that does support HDR, you can flip it into that mode, but you're not going to see it switching in and out of HDR depending on the content. It's going to be on HDR all the time. And hopefully at some point, Windows will get a little bit easier to work with and you'll have some ability to flip back and forth. Uh, but right now, this is probably not going to be as good as an NVIDIA Shield would be for 4K HDR content. But if you are running your uh, Plex server on a PC and you wanted to have that experience of running the client on the same machine for regular old 1080p content, this might be a really good solution for that. So let's step into the app now and get it configured. And I'll show you some of the things that I set mine up to do. All right, so we've got the client up on screen right now. And as you can see, it is just running in a window. That is how it's going to start up by default. And because this is a TV-based client, you can use a remote control if you have one. So for example, if I hit the left arrow key here, uh, you can see I can move up and down the menu options and select stuff. Now I'm gonna hit my name at the top uh, because I want this to run full screen to start with. So we're going to go over to settings and we'll start off in general here. And if we go over to visibility, you'll see there's an option to have it run in a window. We can have it run maximized or we can have it run full screen. And I'm going to select full screen right here, and that's going to switch us into full screen mode. And that's step one here, uh, because you also have the option to set the uh, resolution that the graphical user interface will run in. And if we go down here to advanced, what you'll see is an option to actually up that resolution or decrease it depending on your computer. So I could run the uh, graphical user interface here at a full 4K, or I could just leave it at 1080p like we have set up right now. So let's take a look at some playback options now. We're going to go over to the video menu here. And one thing that I enabled was refresh rate switching. And what this will do is switch your television into the proper frame rate if you're playing back a 24p movie, for example. Most of your Blu-ray movies are 24p, and it will automatically get the TV switched into that mode so everything plays back correctly. I tested that out a little bit earlier on my TV over there, and it worked just great, which is awesome to see on a Windows client here. Uh, your computer, though, needs to support 24p mode, but I think most do at this point. And you can also have a delay inserted if your TV's having trouble getting that set up. So definitely look for that. Another cool feature is that it does support pass-through audio. You do have to go in here and set that up. So by default, it's on auto select device, but what we can do here is direct it over to an HDMI uh, port, for example. So I'm gonna select this one, and what's gonna happen is, is that everyone's options here are going to look a little bit different. So I'm just gonna select this because that is my HDMI. 
And then we're going to go down a menu here. You saw some things change. And we're going to change the audio device kind to HDMI. And you'll see it just enabled a whole bunch of options for us here, including the ability to use Dolby Digital Audio, which we can enable here. And it also supports Dolby True HD and some of the DTS formats too. And I was able to test all of these successfully a little bit earlier. And if you've got some DTS HD audio and your computer supports that, it's going to pass it right through just like it would on an NVIDIA Shield. So again, for 1080p content, uh, this could be a really good experience, but you do have to set these things to on uh, before you get those audio formats streaming out. And you also have the ability to set some offsets and delays here depending on uh, certain circumstances that you might be under. But for me, everything was working fine here just by enabling uh, those particular options there to get going. And that was really awesome to see because the two things I always look for when I'm reviewing a home theater device is 24p and audio pass through for some of the lossless formats, which this appears to support. Now, as far as playing back content, it feels like any other decent set top TV box, maybe even a little bit quicker because it is running on a Windows PC. Everything starts up very quickly. You can fast forward and rewind just like you can on any other client. And again, if you've got a nice little remote control to go with your home theater PC, this should be a very familiar experience if you've ever used Plex on a television before. Uh, one last thing that's pretty cool about it is that you can uh, shut down the entire computer here just by backing all the way out of the client. So I could exit Plex here and go back to the Windows desktop, but I could also power off reboot or suspend the computer from here too. So you've got some good options maybe to just boot this thing right into the client and then just shut it down uh, when you're done watching TV without having to pick up a keyboard. So all in a pretty fun little addition to the Plex client library and it's good to see them giving some attention again to the home theater PCs. And if you've got one and you miss this experience, you're going to have a nice updated version of Plex lean back interface for your computer that you can find at the link you'll see down in the video description. If anything significant changes here, especially with the HDR, we'll definitely do an update on this and let me know what you think down in the comments below. And I wanna thank Plex for their ongoing support of the channel. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Mark Bollinger, Sergio Morales, Mark Dell, Jim Callagher, and Stephen Sue. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.